Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of Gabby Hanna in relation to a recent uprising of drama in regards to a YouTube Red TV show headed up by Joey and maybe some other people. I'm not going to lie. I have not watched the show. It's called Escape the Night. And basically what Escape the Night is, is a show where 10 guests are invited from the modern world to attend a dinner at a host's newly acquired mansion estate, which has been locked in the 1920s. There are a number of YouTube stars that were on the show, so a lot of familiar faces. And Gabby Hanna released some videos regarding that. And people are distraught, to say the least. I have not watched this footage because I wanted to be able to walk into this as unbiasedly as I can with as far as a story background and adding bias -y in. I have seen footage of Gabby Hanna plenty on the internet, so I have a rough idea as to what her baseline is non-verbally. That will help us tend towards the accuracy side, which for those of you who are new and do not know, non-verbal communication reading is... On the average side, 70 to 80% accurate. Now you can push that to be more accurate with certain circumstances, and especially if you're able to do so in real life. Now you can also obviously improve these skills to be able to push yourself closer and closer and closer to the 100% line, though even Paul Ekman, the pioneer of microexpressions himself, says that that is not possible for humans to do at this point. You could get quite close, but not quite there. So we'll go ahead and look through this footage analyze it, see what we're seeing non-verbally from Gabby along with her behavior and psychology taken into consideration during this, and we'll be able to hopefully have some clarity on the situation. I say hopefully because I really have no idea how this is gonna go. All that I was told is that I should buckle up. So I think that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and run the intro and then we'll just immediately fly right off into the analysis right after that. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, there's there's the intro. I just, I wanted to make sure that it's in every video because, because I worked hard on it. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the analysis. So I wanna talk about Daniel Prada, and in relation, I have to talk about Joey because Joey also talks shit about me publicly. Oh. Okay, so this is part of a much longer video from my understanding. The full video is, I think it's around 45 minutes long or something along those lines. It's a very lengthy video from Gabby. I can see that it's sitting in what looks to be a bedroom or a room where you might rest, something along those lines. And we'll see how this all plays out. It looks as if it's kind of impromptu, perhaps unscripted. We'll see if that continues that feeling. And yeah, let's just see how this plays out. Well, there was one in season four, too. Really? Sure. Yeah. That was, wow. season four was my least favorite to film by far. Why? Just because Drama. of this one person on the cast who just made it hell. Really? Is it true that there was drama on the set of season four? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, how was Gabby? Um, Gabby was very competitive. She she would be. She was. Like, I, I wasn't feel expecting like she's lost it at weight all. Looking no, good she now. was. Like, she was Miss Bitch. I would never set. play Mafia with her. You know that oh game. Oh. I wouldn't play any game with she, her. She'll own up to the fact that she was a little nasty on set sometimes. Right. Because like I still have to deal with the repercussions. Okay. So just real quick, from my understanding of this, what actually alerted me to this entire situation was not only some messages from you, but also the fact that a person named Rosanna Pensino, who is known for nerdy dummies, not a very controversial or drama-filled show. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice, wholesome content making baked goods centered around nerdy thing. So Rosanna released a tweet addressing Gabby and she said some very confrontational things in that. So that directed my attention towards here because if Rosanna is gonna say something about it, then it has to be pretty dramatic. So let's see what's playing out here. There's a bunch of people saying that Gabby has been behaving a certain way. I want to see if she's aware of that. I want to see if she's gonna deny that. I wanna see what her side is as well. And then hopefully the nonverbal communication will add some clarity to that of this this situation was actually like for real and it's embarrassing to admit because i feel like there's this very public theme when it comes to my life of me thinking people were my friends who weren't <laughs> dude it's just embarrassing again 
right off the bat, what I'm already annoyed by is that we're seeing cut after cut after cut after cut after cut. This does lead me to believe that it's unscripted, otherwise there wouldn't have to be so many cuts, or maybe it's scripted and she rehearsed poorly, something like that, but there's a lot of cuts. And the reason that that bothers me isn't so much that there's cuts, it's that it detracts from the organic or authentic nature as to what she's doing. So she seems to be trying to react to this drama that people are saying that she stirred up, and the way to do that would be authentically trying to address it, and she's already showing that it's not super authentic just from her editing. But that's nothing so far. We'll be able to hopefully see some nonverbals come out. My heart's fucking pounding. But I've, I've held this shit in, and like the fact that my heart is pounding about it right now, like I don't wanna, dude, I don't wanna live with this shit. And Okay, so what I will notice is that there is some desynchronization between the top half and the bottom half of her face. Her eyes seem to be fairly relaxed. They're very hooded. It seems as though maybe she might be having marijuana or something along those lines, maybe drunk or marijuana, something that is impairing her lightly, just giving her that expression that is pretty common in that area. It is something that I'm keeping track of. I'm not guaranteed that that's the case, but it does seem as though she might... Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't see anything in the frame or anything like that that might indicate that, but it is something that I'm noticing with the really slow blinking, the hooded expression and her eyes are a little inflamed. So maybe something like marijuana or something like that. Let's continue watching. Anymore. It fucking sucks for real because like this for real dead ass is not what I want Like I feel like I've made it pretty clear that this is not what I want because if this is what I wanted Like I would have done this shit years ago Like all I wanted to do for real was just work on my music and do that But it's like so she's very expressive with her hands her pitch has increased her tone has increased These are all signs of agitation not the expressive with their hand side of things But the tenseness in her gestures as well is indicating towards that agitation It's not reaching her face fully because it looks like she has some cosmetic work done on her mouth And then like I said her eyes are displaying this oddly glassy almost expression of perhaps being impaired a little bit by something like cannabis So we'll see if this is the case. We'll figure out some things. Hopefully we'll be able to to unearth some of the truth behind what's going on here. Like every fucking few months is something new and this is one that hurt me so much because I truly for real thought Joey and Daniel were like my real friends. So this was a fucking knife to the fucking heart. So here's how it happened. <laughs> my agent reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do Escape the Night season four. I had done season two and I did not enjoy the experience at all. And I told my agent I did not want to do it. And I- So it seems as though she was being pretty authentic with the I did not enjoy the experience at all. Her head movement was synchronized with that. Along with that, there were no other anomalies from her baseline that would alert me to possibly being deceptive. So during that point, I probably believe that she didn't enjoy going to season two of Escape the Night, but I'm not sure, so let's see. I told him my reasons, which were I was really dealing with a lot of very bad mental health issues and my eating disorder was at an all-time peak. This was around the time of the monster meme, the Kenza cosmetics thing. There was a lot of shit going on and also I did not like the first experience that I was there. First time I signed on to do it I was like fuck yeah I'm dying to do this but I didn't expect my reaction in that type of work environment and so she's rocking back and forth continually throughout this. This isn't something that actually exists in most of her videos. It's rather uncharacteristic of her, which also pushes me to believe that she might be under the influence of something. I don't know that marijuana would have that effect on her, but maybe she's combining or something like that. Regardless, she's not in what would seem to be a normal state of mind during this video. Why that is, I'm not positive. I don't know the backstory for that but it is showing up. And if, if that's the case, then this could be just an influence of something, or it could be another sign of agitation. Anytime that you see somebody rocking back and forth, that can be a sign of agitation. And something that Joe Navarro, who is a very, very reliable nonverbal expert, I would refer to him as an expert. He says that if you see any behaviors that are repetitive, like a bouncing of the foot, the twirling of the hair, it is a self-soothing gesture. The repetition is an indicator for that. And if that's the case, then she might be using this as a self-soothing gesture of sorts, as a pacifier would be another way of saying it. Let's continue watching. It was like, not good. Like I was just unprofessional. Dude, a lot of people have a lot of stories about me being unprofessional. I promise you that. Like there's no shortage of them. 
I used to be really difficult to work with and probably in the wrong setting I'm still really difficult to work with acting especially like stuff on sets it's just something that I personally cannot do if I'm sitting still for too long I need to fucking do something doing a shoot like that where it's like you're there for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day most of it is sitting around doing nothing MTV honestly probably could tell some stories about me too I did not treat my mental health in that way because I didn't understand it I wish I understood the shit about myself so I don't know exactly what all she did on the set. I've heard some rumors about it just from the loose ends of the internet being able to trickle through like my Twitter feed and so on and so forth. I heard that she was doing some pretty terrible things and said some pretty terrible things. And if she's going to try to hang that on ADHD, I know that from personal experience and from many people around that just because a person has ADHD does not enable them to be a terrible person to other people. You still have to hold yourself accountable, make sure that you're in the right circumstances to be able to better take care of yourself, so on and so forth. So if she's going to try to hang her bad behavior on that, I don't necessarily support that because it can undermine a lot of other people who also suffer from it and really put themselves through a lot to be able to be better for the people around them and just make sure that they're being a healthy person, not only for themselves, but also for other people. So let's see how this plays out. Because I really did ruin a lot of opportunities and like possible business relationships. The first time like I was really embarrassed about like the way I acted. I was like super bitchy. I didn't like the working hours. I didn't like the working conditions. My call time for that was like 12 for like hair and makeup. We would start shooting at 7 or 8 and then wrap around like 3, 4, sometimes 5 in the morning. There was literally no sleep. I cannot function like that. I'm sure there's like very professional actors who do that. In fact, like Colleen... So for her credibility side, for adding some credibility to her, that is, is that she is admitting previous mistakes, and this can be a sign of being authentic, of being credible, so on and so forth. It's what's a form of perception management, admitting your own mistakes. This can be true. However, for people who are also very good at manipulating, mentioning past mistakes or prior mistakes can be a form of manipulation because they understand if I admit that I'm flawed, then people are going to appreciate that and then I'm more likely to be able to get what I want now. It's odd that she's saying all in the previous time, this is how I was, this is how I was, this is the thing before, I did these things before, and it feels as if this is leading up to a but, I'm different now kind of thing, and we'll see if that comes up, and if that's the case, then that's manipulation, that's not actually adding towards credibility. Let's see how that plays out. So far, non-verbally, the only thing that has been quite constant is the hooded gaze, which we've talked about, the overt gestures that are very tense and agitated, which we've talked about, and also the consistent rocking back and forth, which we've also talked about. So let's see what else happens here. I mean, literally had like a baby on set and she managed, you know what I mean? I can't. That's why when my agent came back to me and was like, they want you to do season four, I said, dude, I can't. Like, it was not an enjoyable experience for me. I do not want to embarrass myself like that again. So then Joey and Daniel are like, please, we really want you to be a part of the show. We loved you in season two. You looked beautiful. Like you brought so much like shit to it. Tell us what you need to make us make you feel comfortable and we'll make sure you have it. And I laid it out pretty clearly in each meal. I need a protein, a carb and a vegetable. I sent specific meals just so there was no like question. And I was promised that that would happen. That was important to me. I also brought up that I was extremely uncomfortable the first season. My dress was very restrictive. I couldn't lift my arms. Like that gives me severe anxiety. Like, dude, I'm a very fragile person, I know. But that's my point is like, I'm very forthcoming about that with pretty much everyone in my life because I'm trying to set boundaries and communicate clearly. This is how I am feeling. If you still insist because I am, I'm working on that, but like, I like, Still non-verbally, it's getting difficult to get a peg as to where her consciousness is flowing because of how many cuts are in there. Now, I added a few cuts of my own as well, but that doesn't excuse the fact that she herself has many, many cuts in there from her own video, which is making it hard, like I said. But along with that, it is true that you should be clear with your boundaries and make sure that you are taking care of yourself. You have to make sure you do that. So when she's saying that I set out all these things, if that's true, if what she's saying is true, and it's hard to be able to say, like I said, because it's a very chaotically put together video with a lot of graphics and everything, just not good for nonverbal analysis. But if that is true, then that is a healthy thing that being said, some people will go so far as to 
try to set too many <laughs> too many boundaries. And I know this uh, this might be controversial, but setting too many boundaries can be harmful for the people around you as well. So if you have so many boundaries and so many things that are triggers for you that nobody can really function around you, so on and so forth, then you might need to do some better work on yourself before entering back into that circumstance or situation that you were in that was so triggering before. So if that's the case, then that's still kind of an iffy area for Gabby Hanna on this part. I don't know that that's the case though. So hopefully I'll gather some more information as I continue. I don't respect my own boundaries. So if you insist and you're like, please do this, and I agree, and I'm giving you these very clear things that I need. I need to meet my dietary restrictions, which by the way, is not weird for any type of actor or talent on set to have a request like dietary needs. That's a very personal thing. Some people need vegan food on set. Some people need gluten-free. I needed something that was fitting the needs of my eating disorder. Just like, you're a horrible, toxic person. And I'm like, was I? Because like, I feel like what happened is exactly what I told you was gonna happen. But that's why that was such an upsetting situation for me because I was- So I don't know what happened, but just warning somebody that you're gonna be terrible to everybody does <laughs> That doesn't give you an excuse to be terrible to everybody. I'm sorry. If you warn people that it's going to be terrible, then that means that you have to prepare yourself to not be terrible to people. That's more of the adjustment, not like, hey, if you don't do everything that I say, then I'm, I'm going to probably unload on you and I'm going to be a terrible person and you're going to have to deal with it. I'm not sure that that's what she's saying here. It does kind of seem like that's what I'm getting from this specific video. <sighs> I don't know. So far, I'm not having a load of sympathy so far for what I can tell from Gabby Hanna and from what I've heard that she's done. So this isn't matching up quite yet, but we'll get to some more opinion in a bit. I was hearing that behind the scenes for a long time. And I was hearing that he was like playing out voice notes of me being upset that there wasn't like the proper food on set. It's like humiliating, dude, to like, it's one thing to do that like privately behind my back. Like, I know that like Daniel and Joey are two of the biggest shit talkers on the planet. All YouTubers are, including me. I was too. And that's why I don't want, I don't belong in that community. Like, I surround myself with like... <sighs> To know that like my mental health and something that I was struggling with so much and I was so forthcoming about. And like, dude, I was- So from what I can see, the emotion that's welling up in her now, the tears that you can hear, it's also reaching her eyes. And this is hard to tell because like I said, her eyes were already inflamed. So it's getting difficult to be able to determine between the previous inflammation that we saw and the new possible tear-driven inflammation now. It's kind of- highlighted by some tears in there, but regardless, the voice and the eyes are all synchronized and that would lend me to believe that this is an authentic emotion that she's feeling. She might feel the emotion that's causing her to cry. That doesn't mean that she's being genuine or honest. It does mean that she's honestly feeling the emotion that's causing her to cry. And that doesn't necessarily mean sadness. That could just be being upset. So let's see humiliated in that situation too by day three or four i forget how many days i lasted there that was day three or four of literally absolute worst case scenario what it could have been for me i showed up to set and like one of the things they promised was like we promise we'll get you a really comfortable outfit they were bragging that they were like spent all this money on this like beautiful silk and i'm like please just make sure i'm warm i don't want to be in heels again like dude this is like literally playing physical sports outside in costumes. Like it's the most confusing fucking situation. <laughs> and like, I don't wanna be in heels and tights and shit again this year. I wanna be warm and I wanna be able to like move because we sit in these outfits for literally like, the work hours on that set were nuts. I show up on set, literally the exact same problem. So she's describing basic set life for on-screen talent. Very rarely does the on-screen talent get to be like, oh, well, you, I don't want this costume. I do want this costume. It's very much up to the costume designer. And hard hours are part of being on set. Most sets push very long hours. You kind of need it to be able to get the shots that you want for your show. So that's all just normal stuff. What's frustrating to me right now, just speaking from personal experience, is that she's hanging so much of her very bad behavior on ADHD. That's very frustrating just for me personally. And I know that a lot of people who also have ADHD are struggling with that as well. It's difficult because you have to struggle yourself and you, for the most part, I think that a lot of us try to manage quite nicely, but we all know people who try to hang very bad behavior on things like ADHD or other mental health disorders that can kind of impair that or make it more difficult for us personally. So that is frustrating for me to hear somebody else say that, 
but I don't want to allow that to just skew the entire thing. So me trying to bring it up to you, that's a me acknowledging my biasy during this. So I'm gonna to try to counteract that as that goes forward. Just letting you in on a little bit of my thought process here. Where I literally couldn't move my arms and I was feeling really restricted and like claustrophobic in it. I was wearing literally nothing. It was like freezing winds. Once again, I'm in heels playing fucking sports outside in heels. like. All the shit that I was promised wasn't going to happen, essentially. And then uh, the other fucking thing was, <laughs> they asked me, like, are you allergic to any metals when I was getting this costume? And I was like, I'm highly allergic to pretty much all metal except for, like, sterling silver, white gold. First day right off the bat, I'm wearing all of this fake, huge, chunky jewelry that did break me out in very, like, painful, itchy hives all over my body, not just where it was. And then by the end of the first day, I'm like, okay, there's literally no healthy food. There was like a taco on a flour tortilla with cheese. I like pulled Daniel aside and I was like, I understand it's the first day, but like, please make sure that there's like the proper food tomorrow. But it was the last day. And don't get me wrong, I was like bitching the whole time. Like I was very unhappy because <laughs> I was fucking hungry, dude. Okay, so on this part, mm, there's no nonverbal tells that are indicating deceit. But in this area, I did hear, and I also read in various areas, that she did not fill out the food requirements form that everybody had to fill out. I heard that she was overheard telling somebody like, oh, I didn't even fill that out. I hope that that's okay. And that, if that's true, if what that person said is true, then this here is indicating that she brought this more or less onto her own plate if she didn't fill out the dietary restrictions forms that were often handed out on sets, especially sets that seem to be as big as this, then that's kind of on her. You have to be very active for your own dietary things because there's a slew of things that people need to do on a set that they don't have time to really look at all of these different facets if you don't follow the rules that they set out. So if that's the case, then I, I, don't, I don't care that she wasn't hungry. She didn't take time to fill out her form. That's the way that that plays out. That's how everybody should be treated. And if she was treated that way, then that's just part of being on the set. I'm not sure that that's the case though. And there weren't any nonverbal tells for that. I'm hungry. Not eating enough and not eating the right food. And in the mental state of every time I eat one of these like snacks from Crafty, I'm blowing up a hundred sizes. So then the last day that I was there, we wrapped at like 4.30 or 5 because like there was this big power outage thing that like literally postponed production like so late. So we wrapped around 4 or 5 and then I got my call time and I was like, why? It's a night shoot. And that was something that happened to me both seasons where like my call time was always ridiculously early I feel like that's a full work day and we haven't even started working yet then I'm just like sitting around in full glam doing nothing else like it's a miserable fucking experience everybody else who had a great experience great but like for me that's why I said I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to fucking do it and that's honestly also on me for not respecting my own boundary I didn't understand myself enough at the time to know that I just should not have done the show I should have fucking held firm to that and just been like I love you, I wanna support you, but like this is a no for me. So anyway, the last day, I had this absurdly ridiculous call time. So if she had honored her boundaries correctly, then yes, this probably could have been avoided. I don't know how she communicates. From what I've told so far, just from her previous videos, from the head behavior in this one, I'm, I'm certain that it's not very politely or eloquently or even kindly would be another way of saying that. It just seems as though she might not have the best way of communicating and perhaps this could lead towards some of these things where she expects stuff and then get stuff and so on and so forth. But also during a set, it's very difficult to keep up with every single person all the way across. I'm just speaking on this from a background and doing some stuff with sets and so on. So with that, I understand why some things would be missed, but I also understand how frustrating it can be to have some things that you were hoping for missed as well. So it, it, I, I get her side, but I also get the crew side. Let's continue forward. And I literally told the producer, no, I'm getting home. It's like five fucking AM. Like I have to sleep. And they were like, well, we need you to do your interviews. And that was this other, it, dude, it was crazy making because literally they would have me do my hair and makeup early. And I'd be sitting there because like we need to do interviews, which was like the fake reality TV portion of the show. I still don't understand the show dead ass, but there's like a reality TV portion of it where we were like playing these characters, but like it's us. I don't really know. They'd say it was for interviews. And then I'd be sitting there waiting and nobody would come get me to do the interviews so I was like 
what the fuck? But then what was worse than that, they would keep coming up to me and being like, Gabby, okay, uh, are you ready to do interviews? And I'd be like, yeah. And they'd be like, okay, stay put, don't leave, we'll be right back. And then they'd leave and then nobody would come back. So I'd literally just be sitting there for fucking ever and then somebody else would come back and be like, oh, why aren't you in interviews? And I'm like, because nobody came and got me. And then they'd be like, okay, hold on one sec. And then they would leave. Literally what would happen is we would start filming the episode. Okay, so what you can see in this part is that she's doing a lot of memory recollection with spatial elements to it. So she's talking about how people would come in and then I was over here and doing all of that. That does lend towards some authenticity. It's more difficult to remember spatially when it's a fake memory. So there is the possibility that areas or elements of the set could have been quite disorganized. And if that's the case, then that is frustrating for the talent themselves to have to deal with. And I mean, yeah, it would be frustrating. Now, whether or not it's frustrating enough to cause problems, I'm not sure about that, but I could see that it could be frustrating during this point. Also, so far, she's been regularly synchronized, non-verbally speaking, just regularly synchronized. There hasn't been any areas where she's seeping any sort of noticeable deception or even misalignment, because let's be clear, there's not a universal tale for deception. And I frankly don't know Gabby's specific unique tell for deception. Most people do have one, but what I haven't seen are any points of nonverbal misalignment for her, where she's saying one thing and showing another, and that could lead us to believe that there might be deception there. I'm not seeing that. Now, part of the difficulty is, is that she has a very active baseline right now. She's very, very active. A lot of rocking, a lot of gesturing, a lot of moving, a lot of everything. And on top of that, there's a lot of cuts. Long story short, what she's more or less unintentionally done is made it more difficult for people like me to be able to get a behavioral or nonverbal read on her because she's messing it up so much. Not like she's failing at it, she's really just causing problems for a smooth read, cuts and movements and so on and so forth. So this is interesting for me. It's a very interesting behavioral style that Gabby's presenting right now and it's making it more difficult for a nonverbal read. And I didn't do the interview. So you had me get my ass here that early. I sat here and did nothing. Here's what really fucking sent me over the edge. I got home to my fucking room and I had an email from my agent saying, Gabby, you can't refuse to do interviews. And I was like, I'm not refusing to do interviews. I'm literally sitting here waiting and nobody's getting me or miking me. How is this my fault? Like, I literally felt like I was going crazy. This is how I act when I'm upset. Like this right now, my level's already up. Imagine like being there and being like, like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm waiting, I'm right here waiting for my interview. This is my fault, the entire production team, literally nobody just came, I'm sitting in the hair and makeup trailer or in the green room. I was nowhere else because there was literally nowhere else to go. You were either in the hair and makeup trailer or you were in the green room. So like, whose fault is it that I didn't do interviews? Like, what do you want me to do? Oh my God, anyway, so at 4 p.m. of the last day I was there, I was there till seven, the whole interviews thing is there, I'm still sitting there waiting to do interviews, the interviews don't get fucking done. At 4 p.m., I was like, hey, can I get some food to one of the producers? And they said, the kitchen doesn't open till five. And I was like, what? I've been here all day and there's nothing but snacks available. Like, this is fucking nuts, dude. So I blew up at the director. I blew up at probably Daniel and not Joey. I was very careful not to blow up at Joey. But I blew up at Daniel because Daniel was the producer and he was also the person who promised me that he personally would take care of my meals. It just turned into this thing of like, Gabby's a diva. And then I talked to Joey and then they um, they lied to me and said that they wanted me to stay. Cause I was like, dude, do you want to kill me off? They're like, no, like we want you to stay. And then I had heard one of the producers let it slip that they were like killing me off. And then I asked Joey again, like, are you killing me off? He said no to me again. And then it turns out that they did actually plan to kill me off, which was for the best. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like, dude, just. Okay, so during this point, just a lot of talking from her side of things and due to that, due to what she's saying and how she's saying it, there's not too much that's happening non-verbally along with that. What I am noticing with Gabby's mindset here is that she's not considering that perhaps other people are having other things happen and go wrong and whatnot. And it does seem to be pretty centered around her and from the reports from other cast members and crew and so on and so forth, she also seemed to be pretty self-centered throughout the entirety of the 
shooting itself. So that does fall in line. And that also falls in line with Gabby Hanna's history as well as being fairly me, me, me kind of focused. So those are things that I am picking up and noticing in here. As far as her being agitated and saying that she's agitated, that part is genuine. She is angry and to be very frank, even though people can be wrong, that doesn't mean that their emotions that they're feeling aren't genuinely being felt. And so that can't be mixed up in this as well. So nonverbal communication does have the limiter in that it can detect emotion and what's being seeped. And that is about it. There has to be some other techniques added to it to be able to unpack more. So deceit or authenticity, so on and so forth. But nonverbal communication is really the physical manifestation of what your psychological processing is. I know that's a lot of words for just basically it's showing how you feel. And so that's all that I'm able to pick up so far. I'm really curious about how this is going. After this, I am going to, like perhaps in the next video, if this is popular enough, in the next video, I'll look at Joey's response to this because then we can have some sort of contrast here. And from what I'm seeing from Gabby, there's not enough for me to be able to go off of for deceit. So maybe perhaps Joey's would be able to be read a little bit better. Maybe he is less chaotic and a little bit more put together, something like that. We'll see, let's continue be a real person like nobody's a real person i'm you know like whatever i really didn't want it to get to this point just basically saying this is why i got here i do think we need to like stop with this idea that like apologies have to be one way because we were both wrong i was a bitch and an asshole which actually no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call myself a bitch i'm going to say that i had a very i'm betting that she's gonna also say but you and I understand what she's saying. And oftentimes in an apology, it is a two-sided thing. Two people need to probably apologize because rarely is one totally right and one totally wrong. It's almost never black and white. But it's rarely the case for either person to be like, okay, now you apologize to me because then that immediately puts it into perspective. Gabby feels like she is by far in the right on this and everybody else was wrong. And if that's the case, then that is a skewed point of view from her. She's not looking at this with a level logical head. She's looking at it very, very emotionally based because the chances are everybody else likely isn't wrong and you are the one who was mostly right. But that might not be what she's saying here. That just seems to be what her, her mindset is. Let's continue emotional reaction to a very emotionally triggering situation that I could have handled myself better a hundred percent and it's embarrassing and that's why i apologize for it but like to not apologize back to not take ownership of anything that you did to contribute to that like dude you didn't respect me as a person as a friend as a creator as a talent on your show like how unprofessional and gross is it that you as a producer of a show when you needed something to talk about for views literally would throw me I just noticed this and I feel silly for not noticing it earlier if it hasn't been there for a while but she has what looks to be a joint in her hand and a lighter so that does indicate that she was smoking cannabis during that time so that can explain some of the physical representations of it let's continue me under the bus I took ownership for my mis mistake of that to you personally both Joey and Daniel so she goes to say I took ownership and she does a pretty substantial I don't know if it's self-soothing it's a manipulator where she rolls her sleeve up this could be still just indicating her agitation but then along with that she starts to say mistake but she states it wrong and has a little tiny micro movement no now this is curious to me is it is her micro movement no because she started saying the word wrong and she's like no wrong way and restating it or is that micro movement no in relation to what she's saying that I owned up to my mistake more or less? I'm not sure, but let's see, maybe, maybe something will help add to that because that is what would be considered seepage and whether or not that's for the more weighty reason of she not owning up to her mistakes or if it's because she said it wrong, we're not sure. Let's go. I texted Joey and I was like, dude, I wish you would have just talked to me. Like, I thought we were past this. So then he told me that he accepted my apology then, but then he decided he didn't accept it, which is fine. If you want to unaccept your apology, it's weird. So there was a lot of disgust that came out in her face when she was saying unaccepted an apology. Her eyebrows lowered and the action in her nose started to happen as well, indicating disgust. So she has disgust towards that. So when she's saying it's fine, she doesn't believe it's fine. She has a lot of disgust for that. And we'll see hopefully why that is. Perhaps she's just frustrated that she apologized and it seemed as though it was accepted and then it wasn't. 
that could, that's likely what she's going to attribute it to, but let's see. But do you, I guess that's your right. But I think it's also kind of fucked up to like go onto a public platform without at least coming to me first and being like, you know what? I thought about it and I still want to talk about it. I'm still upset. But no, you went and talked shit about me on a public platform. That's fucked up. I don't know, dude. I just think there needs to be something that like, whatever. It's so embarrassing finding out how many people did not give a fuck about me. Like I went through my life without- I don't know if that's the case, Gabby. I don't know that people didn't give a f about you. I think what it more so is, is that you are pushing people away with how you're treating them because you're trying to set boundaries for yourself, which is fantastic. You should absolutely set boundaries for yourself. It's important to make sure you take care of you. But in creating your boundaries, do not weaponize them to people. Do not hurt the people around you with them. If you are in a situation where you feel like you are compromised, that your boundaries have been compromised and you are becoming triggered by something, or you are, it's safer for you to be able to communicate to the people in charge and to try to remove yourself from that. Now, if you can't, that still doesn't mean that you can lash out to people at all. It does mean that you have to try to find a way to recuperate. Now, if you can't do that either, which is rare that you have no time to do anything whatsoever, especially when she's saying that she sat for many hours at a time waiting to do interviews and all this other stuff. If that were the case, that she had no time to be able to go and perhaps do some breathing exercises, some grounding exercises, or anything to be able to help navigate a triggering situation, then it's, it's more understandable that a person would lash out unrealistically or illogically towards anybody around because it can happen and once a person is triggered, it can be less likely for them to show self-control. That doesn't excuse it, but it is understandable. So we'll talk a little bit more about how this could have been handled at the very, very end. Out friends. Like, that's not a friend. That never was a friend. That was somebody who never liked me, never cared about me, and also caused a lot of fucking drama in my life. Constantly coming back to my ear about, like, this person said this, this person said this, like, planting shit in my head. That caused me, like, real drama and repercussions and shit, like... So what she's doing here is she is diverting responsibility from herself. She's trying to say that in this, she was only and purely the victim, which she tries to counteract that by vocally saying, I was, a, I was being a bad person during the time. She's trying to counteract that, but what she's really showing is that she wants to excuse herself from responsibility on most, if not every single level, while trying to get people on her side by admitting her own faults. That indicates that she does not feel her own faults, whereas in these areas, she feels the excuses that she's making. It's rare for people to make an excuse for themselves that they don't feel. It is much more common for people to falsely admit faults. I hope that makes sense. Let's continue. Just sucks, dude. I'm tired of- Big self-soothing gesture and manipulator back here with her hair. That can be to help calm down. A lot of people will do that if they're stressed or angry or anything. It can help calm people down. So that is another indicator that she is quite agitated here. Genuinely so. Let's continue. Like the fake woke conversations about like, we care, we care like about mental health and we want to protect people. Like, no dude, because this is mental health. Let's normalize respecting people's boundaries. I'm doing my part the best I can. I'm trying to work on myself and I'm trying to communicate clearly what I need. And then to just like, whatever dude you get the point <laughs> that's my side of that story anyway and of course i'm sure it falls in the middle like there's there's always three sides despite what rice gum said people say there's two sides to every story but there's literally only one side from where i was sitting I felt extremely disrespected i felt that i asked very fair boundaries which were appropriate time to rest my dietary needs a costume that i felt comfortable and can perform physical fucking activities and challenges in and spend all day in and jewelry that didn't break my entire body out in hives i was a fucking total bitch also sometimes i'm a total bitch for real generally i'm a direct reflection so this is that instance where i'm saying so the boundaries that she's saying that she set those aren't you know, like unreasonable kind of boundaries. I could see where maybe like in the costume area, there could be some conflict and maybe, maybe a middle ground could be found there. But dietary desires or needs or allergy desires or needs as well, like any of those, those are pretty, pretty understandable if that's the case. And if that's the case, if those were them, then I highly doubt that 
that is the main cause of the issue from the other side because those aren't those aren't too difficult to match. <sighs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to see see Joey's video because there are always more than one side to a story. I don't I don't know <laughs> what the little clip is that she was showing in there, but it's true. There are always more than one side to a story. So we're trying to hear her side and then hopefully be able to hear the other side as well. And I've already heard some of the other cast member side. And so far, so far from the other cast members, they're all more against Gabby on this front and Gabby's against everybody else, which lines up with how she's kind of treated the people around her in the past. But let's see how this plays out. We've only got a few more minutes of the energy that's given to me. I really know that about myself. If you are kind to me and treat me with a semblance of empathy and respect and like I can tell that what you weren't trying to hurt me. In fact, I would go as far as to say that my biggest fucking downfall is I try way too fucking hard to make excuses for people because I... <sighs> I don't, I don't think so. There's not a nonverbal reason for me to say that, but... <laughs> This rings to the idea of Michael Scott saying, is caring too much a fault? Because that's one of my biggest faults is that I care too much. Like, that's not true, Gabby. I'm sorry. And I understand where Gabby's trying to come from for this and be like, oh, well, people pleasing, so on and so forth. I get that quite personally. People pleasing is something that I have to actively make sure that I take care of my own boundaries. And that's important to me. It's not something that I naturally do. So I get that where she's coming from on that front. But that being said, just because I have trouble maintaining my own boundaries doesn't mean that it ever gives me a, a right to treat anybody poorly. And Gabby saying, I am just a reflection of whatever energy is directed towards me still doesn't excuse her because that basically is saying is, well, other people are mean, so I'm going to be mean. And that doesn't help anything either. That's how you escalate a, a situation. And obviously it's escalated. To be able to de-escalate a situation, you have to be able to have a little bit more control of yourself. You can't just reflect the negativity around you. You have to be self-reliant as well. There's not really that, oh, well, I just reflect whatever energy. That part I don't really necessarily buy. Let's continue. I know how troubled I've been and the way that I've acted in situations that I'm not proud of. I can understand when somebody's being kind of a shitty person because I wish that a lot of people didn't just push me to the wayside when I was struggling. And that's a very codependent mindset and that's something I've also like, I don't know, dude. I just feel like at this point, dude, I just, there's so much I needed to get off of my chest. I just don't feel, okay. I just don't feel good like gr going through life like, um, I've been giving myself too much anxiety, um, trying to... <sighs> okay, so that was the end of her video, and she actually released a whole series of videos. I didn't go through every single video because didn't want to, to be very frank. So in this, non-verbally speaking throughout that, there wasn't enough to be able to go off of to be able to say she is for sure being deceptive in this area. She's being authentically telling the truth about her narrative in this area. That's kind of frustrating for me to be able to see that it's so chaotic. There's so many cuts and she's so agitated and she's also in an altered state of mind that it makes it difficult to be able to get that solid and accurate read. Even the baseline that has been established for Gabby before throughout all of the different videos is going more out the window as soon as any sort of inebriation can come into play that can really mess up what non-verbally will display. That being said, during this time, it was quite clear that she was highly agitated and that she was gesturing synchronized throughout her recollection of various instances. So where we, she was talking about spatial things and recollecting that way, those seem to be more authentic. So from what I could see non-verbally, her recollection of certain instances is true. I do believe that there was probably some disorganization on the set and that some things were missed, either miscommunicated by them or not heard by her. Now, outside of that, like I said, other cast members weighed in on her behavior during the time and they said that she was not a pleasant person to be around. So if everybody's saying that you're not a pleasant person to be around and you're saying that everybody must be wrong, it kind of turns into a numbers game, not necessarily all the time, but it can turn into a numbers game. If everybody's saying you're a problem and you're the only one saying that you're not, if we're following math, 
the likelihood is, is that everybody's probably telling the truth. It's easier to believe the whole than the one, but that's not enough information for me. I would like to be able to see more. And so if you enjoyed this video and you would like to be able to see the continuation of it with the Joey video as well, because he made a video responding to this, then maybe he will have some areas where it will maybe leak deception or at least desynchronization that could indicate that. Maybe we'll find plot holes in his storyline. I'm not sure, I haven't seen that one either. I've been, like I said, trying to keep myself out of these videos so that I don't walk into it with a preconceived idea as to what I'm gonna say or do or anything along those lines. So we'd, we'd love to be able to see that. And if you would like to see that, please let me know by commenting so in the comments below, say like part two or whatever like that. If you do have some other insight as to Gabby's state of mind, maybe some other things that she's done, or maybe some other things that like cast members have said to be able to add data to it, now I'm starting the study. So let me know in the, in the comments below as well. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you would like to be able to see things faster. And sometimes I do a live stream now and again, impromptu and unannounced, and the only people that really kind of find out about it are people who either get lucky or have the notifications on and they're able to see it. And those live streams stay up for a little bit and then they go away to Patreon to be able to be enjoyed over there. So if you would like to see those or partake in those, the bell is the way to be able to do that. But, but without further ado, that's all that I've got for today. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.